All right, we're good to go. All right. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, January 28th, and the slaughterhouse of failure is not in our destiny. We will persevere until we succeed. Ogmandino, little modified. So today we've actually got uh, a very interesting guest. Um, Dan is going to introduce her, but I just want to give a preamble a little bit where, you know, we have a lot of things that we, we, a lot of books we read, a lot of people we refer to, Tracy Jones, Spark, The Five Essentials, uh, To Spark the Greatness, um, uh, The Four Disciplines of Execution, Simon Sinek, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and there are many references that we, that we can count on, but at a certain time, what's important is for that knowledge and understanding to be changed to action. So today we've got something very, somebody very interesting. Her name is Heather Gallo Ebersol. And um, Dan is uh, more intimately know, can, knows her more intimately. So Dan, if you wanna. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everybody for joining us here. I think we have a really, really uh, awesome guest here today. Really inspirational story. Um, Heather's a friend of mine for, I don't know, maybe the last uh, 10, 12 years, I purchased, she worked at a, a local car dealership and I purchased some vehicles from her and we kind of became friends. We hit it off kind of immediately on uh, a couple different le levels and uh, have kept a, in touch over the years uh, through Facebook and, you know, kind of seeing what each other have going on in our lives. And um, when I was sick last year, I, she sent me a, a text message on or a message on Facebook and was kind enough to send me a, a book um, called uh, uh, The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol. And that's a book about kind of unlocking the power of your mind, harnessing the power of your <laughs> unconscious, uh, using visualization techniques. You know, if you watch ever watch athletes in the Olympics or any, you know, uh, pro professional athletic sports, you kind of sometimes you see them sitting on the sideline and they're kind of got their eyes closed and they're moving around and, you know, they're visualizing their run or they're visualizing what they're going to do athletically and leading, you know, that's helping them be more, a little bit more successful. And so, you know, it's about how to turn your dreams, uh, your thoughts into actions that lead you toward a better position in life. And so, you know, I, I reconnected with Heather, I don't know, about a month ago, I uh, went up and visited her. She, she's doing some different things. She's out of the auto industry while well, still kind of in the auto industry, but she, she really uh, looked at the pandemic as an opportunity to to do some things in her life that she wanted to do because now she had time to do them um, but also had a dream and of, of something that she wanted to accomplish and she set out to accomplish that during the pandemic and uh, you know very proud of what she's done it's it's an amazing story and so Heather if you could um, just introduce yourself a little bit tell us a little bit about your story your background you know spend you know a couple minutes five minutes telling us you know where you were and, and where you are today and then Lawrence and I will obviously have some questions for you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. It's very nice to see everybody. Um, you know, I think that like a lot of other people, we get kind of lost in the shuffle of that everyday grind, going to work, working for somebody else. And I was very appreciative of the opportunity that the auto industry gave me. Um, you know, I got to meet a lot of great people, made a lot of great money. Um, but like a lot of other people, I started working this six days a week, 10, 15 hour days. I have three children. Um, they're now teenage boys. I was very grateful that my family really helped support me, um, between, um, my parents, the, their father, um, really helped kind of kick in, but I just felt like I was really losing this precious time. And that was not why I wanted to have kids. Um, so all of a sudden, one day, I kind of just woke up and I said to my husband, I said, you know, one day, I think I want to own my own insurance company. And the one year, randomly, we go to do our taxes. I tell our a tax accountant um, that, hey, you know, I think I'm going to own my own company, too, because my husband's self-employed. 
and he's not as great about saving money or paying it quarterly or monthly. You know, he waits till the end of the year, stresses about it. And she's like, oh gosh, then you're both going to be self-employed. I'm like, yeah, well, I'll be better about the finances than him. Like, I'm going to just pay it every month and just be done with it. So it was kind of a joke. Um, And everyone that you kind of talk to, of course, they like brush it off. Like, oh, why would you want to do that? You know, it's so risky to own your own business. You're so secure working for somebody else. And I happened to notice I started writing it into cards um, to distant relatives that are, you know, in their 90s. I'm probably never going to see them again. Um, They would just randomly just saying, hey, thanks for checking in. You know, the kids are doing great. I think I'm going to own my own insurance agency. Um, I even wrote it down as I was telling them um, because I'm a huge believer of the book of the magic of believing. It has just been an absolute incredible book um, in two different really important times in my life that I would go back and read it and just again, just remind myself that sometimes you just have to really focus on what it is that you want And it will literally almost come to you. Um, So I'm a big believer in that. But long story short, um, I'm starting to kind of put some of these things into motion and, you know, writing it down, writing it down as a personal goal. I'm telling people about it. But at the same time, I mean, getting your insurance license, working six days a week, having three teenage boys is a little hard, um, to say the least. So I kind of kept putting it on the back burner. Every time I'd get my book out to start studying again, I'd get a new promotion. And then I'd kind of be like, well, it's more money. I got to learn more stuff. And, you know, like most of us, we just kind of put it to the side. Well, the pandemic really opened up my eyes to an opportunity that um, I was in Florida when March um, came around of 2020 and the world started really shutting down and visiting my aunt of mine. And she said, well, you know what you got to do when you go back? She's like, the dealership is definitely going to close down. You got to get your license, girl, and just do it. And that's what I did. So I was so fortunate. I felt guilty that I sat on unemployment, but I got my licenses um, for property and casualty, my life and health. And once I started filling that out, I started just researching every insurance company that was available in Pennsylvania and weeding them out. Um, But, you know, when you look back at it, I do believe that a big portion of what brought this to even be a reality um, was just really knowing what I wanted, writing it down, visually seeing it on a daily, talking about it, telling other people. Um, And now I'm so, so happy a year and a half in um, and, you know, we're doing really, really well. Um, I get to create a work environment that I'm proud of, that I can tell people that, you know, no, go home, go spend that time with your family. If you're sick, stay home. Um, and that we can work hard when we're, we're feeling great. And more importantly, or the most important part for me is I get to be home with my kids more often. Um, you know, my son played travel hockey and I didn't get to go to any of the games other than one that was on mother's day, which was perfectly fine with me. Uh, I was just so happy to see him. But now this year I can go to all of them and take the other kids along too. So it's, it's definitely been life changing. Um, and I'm just very appreciative. Awesome. That's a, that's a great story, Heather. And, you know, I loved hearing about it from you and I've heard, heard you tell this story a couple of times and every time it's inspirational. And, you know, when you start making changes like this in your life, you're always going to have those people that support you. And then you're going to have those people saying, you know, why are you doing this? And, and there's a great uh, Steve Jobs quote. Don't let the noise of other, uh, others' opinions drown out your inner voice. Right. And so you need to kind of chase those dreams that you have for yourself. Like you said, have some accountability, write it down, share it with others. Um, and, 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 you know, the more work you put into it, the consistency, um, the, the higher rate of success you're going to have. And when you look at uh, there's an excellent book called How I Built This. Um, it's a, an author, Guy Raj. He does a podcast and he talks to a lot of entrepreneurs. And he talks to innovators and, and kind of, you know, talks to them about what sets them apart. And one of the things that I, that I, that I got from reading his book was that 55% of Americans believe they can start their own business. When in fact, in 2020, the established business ownership rate in the United States was only 9.9%. So there's a, a big disparity between the number of people who believe they could start their own business and those that actually go ahead and take that next step and do it, right? And so unfortunately, you know, too many people are worried about taking that plunge because they're, they're, they're 
staying in their, their comfort zone, right? And, and when you want to do great things, you really, and, and you want it to be rewarding, you need to start thinking about stepping outside your comfort zone, how you're going to do that and how you're going to meet your goals. Um, so, so how did you go about, you know, making that transition from being an employee to being an, an employer or owning your own business? You know, what was that mindset? Honestly, I feel like I was almost like grooming myself for the last probably 12 years. Um, again, one of the things I'm so grateful for in the auto industry is that they're really big on training, talking about your mindset, um, approaching every sale as that you already know that you're going to secure the sale. Um, so they really exposed us to great people like, I think, Grant Cardone um, and just encouraging you to just listen to the positive um, and just kind of figuring out what you want. They were really big on writing down your goals. Um, so it, it's just something that I've honestly probably been doing for like the last 10, 15 years of, I start my day out listening to YouTube videos. Um, it, it, I find it, I just fill my head with as much as I can of things that I feel like I don't know about. And sometimes that's a motivational video from ET or um, listening to like a Patrick Bet David, who is a big, huge entrepreneur himself that literally started from nothing and would have every reason to have an excuse of why he couldn't be successful. Um, but just listening to anybody that's willing to share their information. Um, so I, I just felt like I was already writing things down. You know, I'm thankful. I'm actually really appreciative that I'm a female that does my hair and makeup every day. It takes me almost like an hour to look like this, even with the gray hair. Um, but I just listen, I put my earbuds in so that the family doesn't hear it. And I literally just every day, at least an hour, if not more, just tune in, you know, I go through the grocery store. I'm constantly plugging information in, um, and then writing down what I, what fits for me, you know, not everything is going to work for everybody, but you got to kind of pick and choose of, Ooh, I like that. Let me look into that more. Um, so I literally, when I really started putting this into motion, I already had a ton of little notes that I, they're, that I call them my bathroom notes. They're in my makeup drawer. Um, and even in my back pocket today, you know, I have written here of like what I want to be done. What is our goal to finish out for this month? You know, what's the next training thing that we're going to work on? So I really felt like I just had so much information already ready to go even before it was even really a reality. Um, so in long, it's, that's my, my long answer. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Lawrence. No, I was just going to say, I think it's, it's, uh, it's inspiring to be able to dream, to believe, first of all, in yourself. And, it, and it's, it's then to put it into action. But where you write it down, you write down, your, you've written down your goals, you've, you've talked about what you want to do. And it's always easier to lie to oneself and say, I'm going to do this and then don't do it. But it's another thing to put it out there and say, this is what I want to do. And <clears throat> despite all the adversities or the adverse comments that somebody might say, you go with your belief and you stick to it. And then you have a little push from an adversity like COVID that kind of was like a, a motivation for you where in other, pe other people, it would be a, um, a, a moment of, you know, oh, woe is me. Whereas <clears throat> that is an, a motivation for you to actually put into effect your dream. And, and it was during adverse times. And I think this is very commendable. And, and, and I think also the fact that you continually learn and you're continually listening to podcasts and, and reading and so on. Life is all about enriching our minds so that we can reach higher levels of of excellence in ourselves so I, and, and uh, <clears throat> the other day when you were talking you you actually mentioned the reason one of the motivations were what we call the pains which was you never saw your kids and i quote what you wrote here you never saw your kids you ate crap never saw your husband you made money but you had no time so these are some of what we call the pains that we look for in people. And it's one of the reasons why the type of business in which we are now, which is leveraged, is 
ideal for people because it allows us to have the time and the money to be able to to do what we want to do. I love what you know. I love. I really love this story because it translates to any anybody in any profession. You know, we've got doctors on this call. We've got pharmacists on this call. We've got salespeople. We've got former Fortune 500 executives. We got people from around the world on the call and listening in. And and all of these characteristics that she has are things that we talk about on a weekly basis, right? And how you're going to be successful: consistency, persistence, commitment, integrity, passion. You know, Heather has all of these things and she took that from the auto industry where she came from. And now she's just, she was successful there. And now she's plugging it in to her own business in the insurance space, right? And and so, you know, one of the things that that really, you know, resonates with me was the fact that previously she didn't have the time to focus, right? On what her dream was. And because of the pandemic, she took advantage of that as an, op- and saw that as an opportunity to, to be able to have the time to make her dream come true. And, and so we talk about this all the time, you know, focus, um, Dr. Tracy Jones calls it singularity. It's the S in spark, her book spark, um, is a fantastic read for anybody who hasn't read it. Um, we, I think we've had her on one of these Friday calls. Um, and she's a tremendous, um, tremendous, a, tremendous advocate for focus as well as the book we talk about a lot, which is the, the five or the four disciplines of execution, right? The, the, the first discipline is, is focused by not having more than two wildly important goals, right? You, you can't focus on more. Our minds aren't meant to multitask. And so if you have more than that, you're just going to be distracted and you're not going to get anything done. So, so we don't, you know, focusing is more about um, narrowing your goals rather than expanding them, right? And having just one or two primary goals that you're always working towards with smaller goals that are um, all going to lead you towards um, succeeding in, in that wildly important goal. So what, for you, Heather, what was your, you know, obviously your wildly important goal was having the time to be able to, to study and um and, and, you know, pass your certifications to own your own insurance business. But what is your wildly important goal for like the next year or the next, you know, two years? Um, I, honestly, it really goes back to my kids. Um, it, it was really about creating that time um, in a healthy work environment. Um, I'm not kidding. Like, I still haven't gotten in to all my other doctor's appointments that I haven't I was never felt like I was important enough to take care of myself in the auto industry. And I did that to myself because I'm not someone who can easily say no. As soon as someone calls off, I was always in that management level. So it, it was really, it is my fault. I do not blame anybody else other than myself, but I felt like it was taking away time from generating that next sale for the business in, in the auto industry that I didn't take care of myself. So it was literally that eye-opening saying, I can create a work environment that not only is going to make me happy, but it's going to make me feel proud to create that for others um, and literally just be able to spend that time with my kids. It is a very crazy, crazy world (laughs) more than ever. And I just wanted to be able to be involved. Um, I have two that now homeschool, one that does go to school and they're just a very impressionable age. Um, my twins are 14. My oldest is 16. And I just, I know that I'm not going to have very much time left before they go off to college or go out on their own. And I just really wanted that time. Um, so it, it's not like that's really probably what the, the, that's like the goal that you're literally looking for, but that is truly my, my motivation. So it's whatever I have to do to be able to get that those other little things to get that are almost like my small goals that you were talking about. So it's, you know, so we it's have to produce self, being self-employed, owning your own business and being able to have that time. Yeah. Right. But ultimately your main goal is to spend that time with your kids, which you never, you know, that's time you're never going to get back. And so no. doing it while they're still in the home is, you know, super important. And one of the things that I, I love about what you just said was that you're taking ownership for, you know, why you weren't taking care of yourself or, you know, why, why you weren't where you wanted to be in life. You know, 
one thing about people that are successful and and who um, lead successful teams are they take ownership. Um, Jocko Willink's book, Extreme Ownership, is a fantastic book for those of you who haven't read it. And it's all about taking, taking ownership of your actions and ownership of a team. No matter what happens on that team, it's ultimately the leader's fault. Um, and you need to take act, you need to take ownership of that. And, and you know, taking ownership of, of your life, um, you know, it's, it can be daunting, right? To think about all the things that you have to do to take ownership of your life. Um, but it's worth it in the end. And so you so, we talk about these wildly important goals um, and, and the four disciplines of execution. The four disciplines of execution is, is basically a formula for executing your most strategic priorities and meeting that wildly important goal, right? And so, you know, one of the things that I think we all need to learn is to not focus on the perfect goal for your team, right? There's never going to be a perfect goal. You need to explore the team's current situation and identify an area that you can significantly impact the organization by making a change, right? It doesn't always have to be, uh, you know, a, a super important goal, but you, it needs to be a goal that's going to give the most impact to, to the players on your team and your team in general. So, you know, you, but you need to install, instill your wildly important goals there in that place that's going to give you the most impact it doesn't matter if the change is small or it doesn't matter if the change is big. It, it has the largest impact on your organization, right? And that's where you're going to create your wildly important goal. I think it's important too. And I don't ever try to reinvent the wheel, um, but I've been really fortunate that I've reached out to other successful people. And whether it was, you know, in any other job I've ever had, I always want to just learn because then you've got to take what somebody else did and you've got to say, okay, well, that will work for me. Or like, oh, no, I cannot do that. That's just not a good fit for me. And I've been very, very fortunate because the first six months were brutal. I mean, they were ugly. I was coming home and saying to my husband, um, I'm going to need $3,500 out of our home equity line um, to make payroll this month. And I'm not going to be able to pay any of my portion of the bills. Like that was our reality, like many business owners. And I, in January of last year, I reached out to another very successful agent within our organization. And she literally is like my guardian angel. She scooped me up under her wings, said, I wrote a book. You can do this. You got to sign up for this and you call me whenever you need me. And it literally opened me up to all these other agents out there, whether it's with the company that I work with or other insurance agent owners. And we all collaborate. We all share our ideas of, hey, this is what worked. This did not. Make sure this is in your employee handbook. Hey, did you start tracking this? And it literally has just changed our world dramatically. And it's surrounding yourself around those people that don't just look at the negative and say, oh, you know, the company is making so many changes. Our technology system went down. It's surrounding ourselves with people that have that positive mindset. Great. You know what? When the system goes down, role play with your team. Do a vision board with your team. Like when else are you going to have the time to do that? So I'm, I'm super, super thankful for her. Um, she's just really opened up a world. But again, it's because I, like, you have to reach out to other people. I didn't reinvent anything. Everything I do, every form I fill out, every word tracking that we use is just somebody else's success story. So I, I just think that that's a big piece of it too, that when you find something that you want to do, reach out to others and find what they did right that worked. Awesome. Lawrence, go ahead. We've, we've only got a, a couple of minutes because there's a hard stop at 10. Um, but I just wanted to mention one thing that you sifted and sorted through all the insurance companies to select uh, the one that you chose and what made you decide made you passionate about what you have. And that was, could you tell us about the pit bulls and why you, why you chose that company? We've only yeah, got so the company I chose, um, it really came down to two. And um, when I looked at the differences, the two things that were the most passionate for me was that this company offers a water backup. I personally have lived in two different houses that have had sewer water backup in the basement. And let me just tell you, it's the nastiest thing. I don't ever wish to ever go through ever again in my life. Um, but because we didn't have an insurance policy that covered that, we had to do it ourselves. 
And um, yeah, needless need to say more about that. But the other part was um, we're proud owners of pit bulls. And there's a lot of dog breeds that your insurance company may not protect you for the liability for. And at that time, when I was looking at the agency, we had three dogs, all three pit bulls. And knowing that our current insurance carrier would not have protected us um, if there was a dog bite or some kind of lawsuit was a really big piece of that. So, and I always kind of joke, it didn't hurt that their pay plan also happened to be about double of what the other one was, but I wasn't making that to be my final decision. I wanted something that, you know, I could really tell a true story on um, and the water backup and making sure that if something does happen with our dogs was really, really important. So shifting and sorting and find your passion. So basically that's, that's it. And, and uh, so, you know, I, Heather, thank you so much for, for your time. Um, unfortunately today we've got a really hard stop at, at literally in two minutes. If, if you'd like to have a parting shot or Dan, if you want a little words of wisdom, if you want anything no, else. I mean, I, I think, you know, People come into our lives and people are in our lives for a reason. You know, Heather's a very positive person, a spiritual person. We've talked about Buddhism. We've talked about all these different things. And, you know, I thought this was going to be a good call, uh, but I think it was a great call. And I think there's a lot of uh, what Heather says and, you know, in her business that it translates to all of us. Uh, and, and so I'm very thankful that she decided to join us when I asked her to do this. She said the one thing that she said was this is out of my comfort zone but you need to do things outside of your comfort zone to grow, right? And succeed. And I said, exactly. Um, but she, she was a fantastic asset to all of us today. So I want to thank Heather uh, for being here. Really did enjoy the conversation. I think there's a lot of golden nuggets in there, things that we talk about on a weekly basis on our mindset call. And, you know, we'd love to have you back in the future, um, you know, six months, a year from now when you're the top uh, insurance agent in the, in the country and uh, talk about what you did to get there. Yes. Well, thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday. Thanks, you. Heather. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. Friday. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Heather Lawrence and Dan. Thank great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you.